Dr. Doom is back with another Game of Doom, a game that no matter how good you are, you cannot defeat, and that game is Atlantis. That came in three different flavors for your Atari 2600, including your standard text, your daytime attack scene, and nighttime attack scene. Which one do you prefer? Text? No? No? Daytime? Nighttime? Uh, whatever you pick, let's go ahead and take it, pop it in my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it holds up today. Let's go to the game. Atlantis was published by Imagic and carries a copyright year of 1982. It was programmed by Dennis Koble, who would later work on several of the 16-bit PGA Tour series of games and Xena Warrior Princess on the PlayStation 1. According to the manual, the ancient underwater city of Atlantis is under attack by Gorgon vessels, and now it's up to you to defend the city. Atlantis is a single screen action game that plays a little bit like a Missile Command Space Invaders hybrid. In the game, you can control the Acropolis command post in the center and two sentries at each side of the screen. During the game, Gorgon vessels will fly horizontally, descending further with each pass. The Acropolis command post shoots straight up by pressing the joystick button without moving the joystick. The sentries on the left and right shoot diagonally. To fire them, hold the joystick to the left for the left sentry and right for the right sentry and press the button. The city you're defending contains seven areas, including your three weapons, generators, dome palace, aquaplane, and bridge bazaar. If an enemy ship gets low enough, it will destroy one of these areas, starting with the command post in the center. For every 10,000 points, you can recover a lost area or store one in reserve if all seven areas are intact. If, however, all seven areas are destroyed without any in reserve, your game will end with the cosmic arc taking off, indicating you can continue the story in the sequel of the same name. There are two types of enemies in Atlantis. The standard large Gorgon ship is worth 100 points when shot by the central post and 200 points if shot by one of the side sentries. The smaller bandit bomber is worth 1000 points if shot by the central post and 2000 points if shot by the side sentry. Shooting the bandit bomber will also cause all the other enemy ships to explode, although you won't gain any extra points for them. If you survive a wave, you will also get 500 points for each area still intact. Atlantis offers four variations including your standard single player variation, an easier single player variation, a single player game where you can only fire the side sentries, and an interesting two player variation where each player controls one of the side sentries. Graphically speaking, I thought the game looked pretty nice, especially the details in the underwater city. This is a definite step up over Missile Command on the 2600. Sound effects in the game were limited, but they did get the job done. And yes, I would consider this a family-friendly game. At the time my research on eBay, loose copies were going for $4 to $5 and complete copies were going for $9 to $18, including shipping. There was also a modified version of Atlantis made by Imagic for a special contest that was much harder and had a different font for the score. It was sent to specially qualified contestants in the nighttime picture version box with a generic sticker that said Atlantis 2. The cartridges themselves looked just like the standard nighttime variation, so the only way to find out if they are any different from the standard game is by playing them. Due to the extreme rarity of these carts, when they were first found they were going for about $5,000 a piece, but recent sales have taken that price down to $500 a piece. So what did I think of Atlantis? Well, I've said before in a previous video that I'm not the biggest Atlantis fan, but I did enjoy it more than I thought I would. It's a game that controls well, and I can enjoy every now and then, but the gameplay is a bit repetitive, so it's not a game I'd play for more than 5 to 10 minutes at a time. However, someday I would like to try the unique two-player game. So where am I going to rank Atlantis? For me, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. Now, I know some of you will think this is crazy, but I actually enjoy the two-stage 2600 version of Donkey Kong a little bit more than Atlantis at 49, but I will give it an edge over Sir Lancelot at 50. So out of the 95 games I've now ranked on the 2600, Atlantis is going to be defending the 50 position. Atlantis is a solid title on the 2600. So what do you think of Atlantis on the 2600? Whether you agree or disagree with me, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Also, feel free to click the like and subscribe buttons. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash nosewordgamer for more information. You can also follow me on both the Facebook or the Twitter. Thank you for giving me a little part of your day, and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. 
Take care, and now I leave you with a poem from the manual. Atlantis, its last installation devastated, explodes in a fury of fire and radiation. But wait, a satellite streaks into space. Where is it bound? Has someone survived the Gorgon onslaught? Can the cosmic arc repopulate the ocean metropolis? The saga continues in the next episode of the Nosferatu Gamer when I review Cosmic Arc. See you then, everybody.